William. Yes, sir. You're out here homeless in Detroit. Tell me about it. Well, let's see. Um, where do I begin? It started for me uh, when I became homeless, full-fledged homeless, was July of 2009. Um, I can actually say, though, I lost my house to foreclosure a couple years prior to that, um, when that whole that whole bottom fell out of the, the real estate market. I lost I, my house to foreclosure, too. And I found out what happened was that the people who were doing the, the transaction thing, they inflated my, my credit score. So I qualified for something that I should not have qualified for, and I got stuck with a mortgage payment that was, I didn't, I, at the time I was juggling uh, my mother who was dying of lung, of lung cancer, and we were moving from Detroit a mile up the road into Hazel Park. And so we got this house really quick, and I was handling her affairs. I didn't read everything I was signing. I had a, uh, it wasn't a fixed rate mortgage. It was, it was a little craziest, uh, I don't know what they call that, adjusted rate mortgage or whatever. Yeah, but I, I was, remember back then, yeah. It was $900 or something the first month. Then it jumped to $1,400 the second month. It blew. Then it, yeah, it was crazy. So I was in the house only the year. I, and plus I, after my mother passed away, like six weeks going into that house, that's what I found out I had colon cancer the first time. And this, we're talking to the, the beginning of 2007. So my mother died January 28th of 2007. Um, so I went into treatment, was in there for about five, five and a half, going on six months, and I came out unscathed. The person who I had handling my financial affairs completely ripped me off, didn't pay any of the utilities. So I came out not only sick and trying to recuperate from everything that I went through, but I was buried under the ridiculous debt. Um, I mean, I owed, I couldn't get no utilities turned on to my name. I couldn't get in credit for anything. Uh, my, my, the mortgage ruined me, and plus they had a padlock on the door. So I had to break in to get what I could out. I went and stayed with a friend in Royal Oak for a few months, uh, slept in his basement. Um, and then when he lost that, I moved with a musician buddy of mine's family up in Auburn Hills up by Great Lakes Crossing. And those people were way in over their head. I didn't know what I was getting into when I went on in with them, but they were a little but eccentric. It was, it was inside. You take what you can get. Yes, yes. And um, it, it, they ended up losing that. So I ended up coming all the way back to Detroit and I found a little studio apartment at the Hotel Park Avenue, which is right behind the Hockey Town Cafe. Uh, it should be right where they have that new arena down there. And they had bed bugs in there. Ended up getting a diagnosis of polyp they found in my colon again. So I'm going, uh, but this time it was, you know, it was benign. Yeah, uh, and had that, you know, taken care of. That was my little second scare. Now we're talking, uh, this is two years from the first time. Right. Um, About 2011. Yes. Uh, now recently they had found some spots on this lung over here. Uh, and they found what they said was like a little node on this lung. Now the biopsy, they got, they got that. All right. And over here, I took some light chemo injections and this is clearing up real good uh but i'm still dealing with the copd well, from the smoking of the cigarettes and the uh so we're out here with street medicine detroit yes and you were just telling these the people have yeah. been amazing they they're coming out here for at least a couple of years I, I believe and they've been because i don't get to i don't know who my primary care doctor is and the last time i found out who it was he was way over on Jefferson Avenue, and I didn't even really know how to get over there. I found out later on that I had insurance that would have pay for transportation to get me over there. Wow. But by the time I found that out, yeah. they they took me off their list. So now I got to find out again. So now I have to. I've been buying inhalers off of extra, you know, people off of, out here, or some people yeah. who have an extra one and knows what it is to go through oh what I'm God. going through. They'll give me one. 
But you, when these guys would come through, man, like these guys would give me, they would take my vitals. Yeah. They would talk to me like I'm a human being. Yeah. You so know? you're just telling a, a uh, med student that as you get older out here, homeless, you've been homeless nine years. Yeah. You feel like hey, hey. your health is getting worse every yeah. year. Yes, yes, definitely my, my breathing. Uh, I'm losing a lot of my dynamic strength. I know that much, but definitely just the pacing. I think the COPD thing is getting really, 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 really worse. And then on the humid days, it's almost like I'm my everything is on fire inside. Yeah, so how I can't do you survive really out here with the with the health issue? Can you survive God. cancer twice, homeless? Yeah. How do you do that? A deep faith in God. I could tell you that right now. I have a deep faith in God, uh, and it grows deeper every day that I see that he gets me through it and he gets me through it with my integrity intact with a good strong conscience knowing that I didn't wrong anybody ain't got to look over my shoulder uh, and so when you have to you walk around like that under all that kind of pressure you know that just add more stress and it impacts your health you got to have God out here that's what most church folks yes. they think they're gonna save the lost out here, people out here gotta have faith just yeah. to get through the yeah. day. We yeah. already know yep. Jesus. Yep. You know, yep. you gotta have, go evangelize in the church. Right, you guys, you you have to, you have to, that person, when you're talking to them, it's God who's gonna be the saving this person. You're just presenting him to them. And you're doing that through like what these people do. They come out here, they don't judge, they talk to you and treat yeah. you like you're a human being. They smile, they 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 inquire, you know, make inquiries, they give you the impression that they actually yeah. care. And well, that right care. there is that sparks something in somebody, you know. It gives them at the very least hope that there's somebody out here who does care. Yeah. And what what was your first day of homeless like? Um Street wow. homeless. Okay, so, hey now, after I left that apartment downtown, there's this guy, this place down here on Golden Gate and Woodward, and there's this, this quack <laughs> chiropractor. He's one of those new age hippie chiropractors. He has this abandoned dental office that's right across from his place, I, and where he used to raise his goats and his chickens and, wow. and, and all that stuff. Well, uh, I slept in there. Well, at first I slept in the in his the parking lot right across from him in an abandoned station wagon for most of that summer. Okay. Um, then when it started getting colder, I moved inside that building, uh, which was just for the situation I was in. Like the CDC would have loved to, to, to study that place. I mean, there was just so much. There's like goat feces. Everything I was yeah. surrounded by. But I had to make a, a spot in there for me to sleep in. People need to know, downtown Detroit has become urban farming. Oh, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, so I went down the street after it got too cold to be in there, and right in the middle of the block, hey, between Woodward and Charleston, there was this two-family duplex, or bungalow, I don't know what you want to call it. Uh -huh. And the downstairs was called the foxhole and the upstairs was called the rabbit hole. That's because all the transients that were coming to this area, like the train hoppers and stuff, they would squat there and then they would leave something there. It was like, this is a little known thing. So they nicknamed the, that the place. So when I went in there, that place was fully furnished, bed and everything. I had to take a barrel though, because the, 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 the fireplace in there, I, there's no way in the world. I didn't know nothing about checking it, but that fireplace ain't been used. It looked dirty and smelled oh dirty. So I couldn't use that to heat myself. Yeah. If it had been clean, it would have been the perfect situation for that house. But I had to get a barrel, one of those big steel drum barrels. And I burned wood in it. Okay. In the middle of the living room. Yeah, so you slept out so, nine winters? Uh, yeah. Well, I, well no, I, I slept out here. I started sleeping out here in 2011. That first winter, then part of the second winter, I was going back and forth from here to a vacant house to warming center up in Royal Oak. Uh, and then there, let me see, flash forward, I came back here, 2013, it's crazy. It's gotta be 2014. Crazy cold. Yeah, I had a tent. I had a lot of great people help me in weatherizing that tent. Yeah. Animal skins, all kinds oh, wow. of stuff. 
setup. Oh, yeah. You had a setup. Yeah. So, um, what would you want people to know about homelessness that they probably don't that know? There are, yes, the conventional understanding of a lot of the homeless people, because a vast majority of that is more visible than anything else. Hey, there. Is um, that not all of them are drug addicts? Right. You uh, know, not everyone are drug addicts. Not everyone are alcoholics. I can tell you after that that uh, real estate crash, a lot of honest, good working, hard working people found themselves homeless. Right. Um, it's so different than the Great, the, the Great Depression when, when, that, when all that crashed, you had all these millionaires and stuff that became paupers overnight, committing suicide. You know, they, they were homeless. So not, now things are swinging. You're gonna find a lot more people who, unless you get to know them, you, they're gonna get lumped in with people, you know, just assuming that if you're out here homeless, you're dope headed. It's not the truth. And it's not the truth anymore. And it's not gonna be the truth really visibly soon. Yeah as time goes on. Uh, I'm hoping that Trump is able, I'm a Trump supporter. Okay. I'm hoping that, every, that he's able to turn, you know, things around and, and, and swing this country back away from socialism. Because socialism is, uh, we did eight years of that under Obama and the Democrats and it was it was disastrous. Well, you, that's for us. a good segue because I try yeah. to stay away from politics. Yeah. On this. Okay. Because it, it gets. I got you. It gets sticky. I don't really want to get too much yeah, into yeah. that either. I just thought I'd say it. Yeah. That. No. No. I, but, I'm, I respect. Yeah. You know. Um, if you had three wishes, what would they be? Uh, that I can undo all the years of damage to my health. Um. And that God, there's some, there's this one church building that's right over by where I'm kind of like sleeping on State Fair and John R. I would love to turn that into a homeless, you know, center where people can get in off the street, they can get fed, they can get counseling, and they, that place is large enough where people can sleep. You know, you can help battered women. Uh, there's so many kids I see out there running around with no fathers, yeah. you know, getting hooked on drugs or into selling drugs, and they're like 13, 12 years of age. Like that building is just there, yeah. and it just needs a purpose. And there's it's in probably good a lot condition. of buildings here you could do that with. Oh my goodness! But, so what else? Um, let's see. And the third one would be. You know what? I know the third one would be to be able to tell. I lost a son to leukemia. Lost my mother to lung cancer. Lost my father uh, to, uh, I don't know what they call that. It was, uh, had to do with his respiratory system and I think his heart. But, but, but I, I would love to tell them again that I love them and I would love to apologize for all the hateful things that I said and did uh, being caught up in my own, you know, alcoholism and stupidity. And you, you got know, 20 years that. sober now, right? 20 years. Yeah. This August will be 20 years. Well, thank you very much for talking to me. Yeah. All right. Nope, not a problem. That was probably the longest interview, too. Ha, <laughs> ha. Woo! People are asking for longer interviews. So uh, okay. Since you wanted to talk, I kept rolling. Uh, oh, okay. I was waiting for you to give me the cue. No, no, yeah. no. no, no, no. <laughs>